Hi everyone, thanks for joining us for uh, this week's Connected Educators Google Plus Hangout on the Air series. My name is Jenny McGuera and I am the Digital Learning Coordinator for a network of 29 Chicago public schools called the Academy for Urban School Leadership. And I am Chad Kafka, I am a tech coach, tech integration specialist for Franklin Public Schools, which is just located a little south of Milwaukee. And we're here today to share some different tips and kind of structure and strategy for using Hangouts with your classroom. So Jenny's going to kick it off with talking about the way she introduces Hangouts with students and with classrooms and talking a little bit about the pedagogy. Absolutely. Thanks, Chad. So the first thing I'm going to do is share, I'll talk over this uh, video that I have of my kids. Um, doing one, Let me mute them. So you can see um, they're in there, they're having a hangout with another classroom. And you can notice that right up in front, uh, Damarion is talking into my computer. So one of the first things that we do is um, obviously the, the uh, audio can't pick up the entire class and it's not the best practice to have them just shout out their answers from the front. So instead, we take turns being the speaker role. So students prepare a list of questions or ideas or things that they want to share with the other class based on whatever the, the hangout's about. If it's discussing a math problem or doing um, a geography discussion or talking about a problem of practice or a social justice issue, they kind of script out some ideas that they want to talk about and they take turns coming up to the speaker booth and talking right into the camera and speaking right into the microphone. So that, that really does help a lot to alleviate any issues with uh, sound and also making sure that we're taking turns uh, speaking. Something else that we definitely do is make sure that uh, the kids have talked about norms. So especially with our younger kids, I have you know as young as second and third graders doing it, and we've even done a first grade classroom, they forget that they don't know the kids on the other end. Some of the kids know very well, oh, those kids are strangers, they get really shy and clammed up, but some of the other kids want to say things like, what's going on with your hair, or how much money does your mommy make, or you know, questions that might not be the most appropriate or on, on task for a hangout where we have a limited amount of time. But so still, good, have, still good questions. Still good questions. But we talk about like what, where, to, how to um, maybe prioritize our questions. So if we only have a 15 minutes uh, hangout on the air, or hangout, we want to say, okay, you know, let's ask these questions first, that we could talk about other questions later. Um, and also talking about audio and movement. So it can be really distracting to the other class when my kids are kind of squirmy all over the place, or getting up and walking around, or talking in the background. And normally we try and be a little bit less fascist with with that kind of chatter because they're they're debriefing it, they're discussing it. But when you're on a hangout and the audio quality is really important to um, support communication, we want to make sure there's not too much background noise or our partners on the other side of the hangout aren't going to be able to hear our speaker and aren't going to be able to communicate back with us. Um, and then a final tool that we use, uh, there's a couple other things that we do, but we'll just share a few right now. Uh, the final one that I'm going to share with you today is using Google Moderator. Chad, I'll have show you? It. Yeah, I'll yeah. show it here if you want to keep talking. I'll, I'll screen share and you can show my screen. Okay, awesome. So we've got, and I'll, I'll pull it up too just in case our audio uh, bumps us back and forth, so we'll do dueling screens here. Um, but Google Moderator is a fabulous tool if you haven't used it. It's another free tool in the Google suite. You can get at it by going to uh, google.com slash moderator. And all it is is a back channel system, so it allows you to ask questions um, or submit ideas. You can change whether it's asking for questions, ideas, or suggestions. And the kids can uh, have a back channel or a discussion during the hangout, which is really nice because when only one student is able to go to the front and attempt to speak, the entire class can be engaged. Your other 29 or 30 or however many students you have can be actively engaged in the discussion. So while Damari ends up front saying something, other kids are reacting to what he's saying or what our partners are saying on the other side of the hangout by asking questions or commenting. Um, and a great thing about Google Moderator, which I like above some other back channel software, is that it allows you to respond directly to everybody. Um, so you can see if somebody's talking to you or to someone else, whereas other back channel uh, programs don't allow for direct responses. Uh, another thing I like about it is it allows you to um, vote, upvote or downvote. So I can say I agree with this or I disagree. Um, and you can see how different ideas, questions, or suggestions are faring with the, uh, 
the population at large between not only your class but both classes. So we'll create this moderator and share it with uh, everyone on the Hangout and everyone's participating in it. So kids who might not have a chance to have a lot of screen time are still actively engaged with the folks on the other side of the Hangout. So those are just some pedagogy tips that we do with our kids. Uh, Chad, do you want to add anything to that? No, you hit on, on a lot of the main ones. It's just uh, especially sending a student up to the computer. If you're showing your whole classroom, I think camera placement is important. So you got to remember that the camera is the computer. Uh, so, you know, not having the camera showing something too high or too low or just showing the top of someone's forehead and kind of sending students up to the computer if they're the one asking the question because then the audio will pick up better and the view will pick up better. Um, do we want to talk about some other tech tips and other uh, yeah, strategies? Absolutely. But Okay, so so I'll do I'll do one first, and this actually relates to how we're doing this hangout right now. So I'm actually where I'm working right now. I don't know if you can hear this in the background, but I'm I'm located physically next to our middle school gym, and they happen to be playing some audio in there really loud. So a good tech tip is to know how to mute your audio when you're in a hangout. Uh, if I do a screen share here, up in the top right corner, up here is a little microphone icon, um, and if you mouse over it. Well, I can't do it while I forgot. I can't do it while I explain it. Uh, if you click it, it goes red, signifying that your end is muted. So that's how you can mute yourself in the Hangout. This is great, uh, great to know, especially if you have a whole classroom of students and you're conversing with a whole another classroom of students, and you don't want the um, the other class to be disrupted if there's you know somebody making noise or something going on in your classroom. So you can mute and unmute yourself. So as Jenny was talking and explaining the pedagogy, I just kept my my uh, finger on the trigger here and I was muting myself and unmuting myself whenever I knew I needed to speak. So that's one tech tip. Jenny, you want to share a tech tip? Yeah, a lot of times uh, we'll be in a hangout and bandwidth won't be so great so we'll get uh, dropped from the hangout and it's really important to know how to get back in the heat of the moment so that you don't miss out on the conversation. So uh, what, one of the ways to do that is to go to your Google Plus page and go to the hangouts area. So I'll go to my Plus page and you'll go to your Hangouts area and then you can rejoin the Hangout. You can see any Hangouts that are going on live um, and uh, what's, uh, where you could rejoin. So I can see my Hangouts right off to the side here. I can see that um, I have a little camera here with Chad or I can click over here um, if there's Hangouts on the air that I dropped out of and want to rejoin. So there's a couple different ways to do it. Another way to join is if somebody sent you a calendar invite and uh, you want to click the link that was in the calendar invite to join the Hangout. And a third way is if someone sent you an email or a Hangout chat in your, in your Gmail inbox. You might see a chat there. You can always click the link. The link stays the same for the whole Hangout. So if you have that link somewhere, as long as you click it again, you can join back in. But one other tip about getting dropped from a Hangout and rejoining is there's a way to turn down the amount of bandwidth that, you're, uh, that your computer is using. So at the top here, in that same area that Chad was showing you before that had the mute button, the third icon over that looks like a little right triangle is adjust bandwidth usage. And if I click on that, you can see I'm all the way up to the top because I have pretty good wireless where I am. But if I'm um, on you know, a wonky school Wi-Fi, I might turn that down a little bit. It'll make my image a little bit more pixelated. However, it'll make the Hangout stream a lot better and make sure I, uh, I don't drop as much as I might have uh, without doing that. That's a good tip. I actually forgot about that. Similar, similar to that, um, we try to encourage our staff if they're ever doing a Hangout. Uh, wireless is great, and if you have a good, strong wireless connection, nothing wrong with using that. But uh, we try to encourage our staff, if possible, use your internet cord, ethernet cord, and actually wire in your computer. With doing that, we also encourage our staff, when they are wired in, to actually go onto their machine and turn off the Wi-Fi, just so you, for sure, are working off the wired connection. Typically, wired uh, is better. It's about 10 times better than being on, on, a, on a wireless signal. So... Uh, good tip there, I guess. And Jenny, you want to do the next one? Yeah, sure. So another one that's really important is uh, lighting. And I'm a huge, uh, I'm really bad at this. Um, one of the things is you want to make sure that you're in a room that's front lit. So I don't want to be um, in a dark room, and I did this the other night, with just my computer screen because then it's a little serial killer -y. It's really spooky. And even with our kids, you know, I know that a lot of times we don't have the best bulbs in our projectors, and so we turn off all the lights and close all the shades where we want the projector to go, and so the only light is, is eerily emitting from the computer. So it's like, woo, 
And right. if that's the case, I mean, go ahead and do it. I mean, you got to do what you got to do. However, if you have a choice, turn the lights on in your room so that folks can see you. Another uh, common mistake is having being overly backlit. So having a window in the back, and then you're the shadow man or the shadow lady. And I can demo that really quick right now. I'm going to move over here while I turn off my camera. And then, so you don't have to get weird Blair Witch as I walk. So and while then, while you're doing that, actually, what yeah. Jenny did was she went up into the top right area where the mute button is, and there is a choice. If you don't want your picture to be seen for some reason, uh, you can click on turn camera off, turn camera on, just like you can turn audio off, turn audio on. So when you turn the camera off, you just see whatever her profile picture is. So now if I turn my camera back on you can see that I'm standing in front of a window and I'm the shadow lady. And a lot of times you're <laughs> sitting in front of a um, in front of your window in your classroom and you're like, oh, this is so bright and beautiful. The light's going to be fabulous, but this is going to be what happens. So don't do that. Right. Good. Good example there. I don't have any windows in my office to demonstrate that with. <laughs> so uh, one of the other tips is remember where your camera is. So a lot of times whenever we're sitting at the computer and we're in a video chat like this, you see yourself on the screen and you tend to look at yourself on the screen. You're like, oh, look, there I am. <laughs> well, remember that that camera is probably up at the top of your uh, computer area right up here. So if you are presenting to an audience, we typically try to encourage staff, make sure you're looking at that little green light. If you're using a MacBook or on a Windows machine, it might have a light as well. Um, but you're talking to that camera and then that's coming across well. Really doesn't matter if you're looking down, you know, two inches at the screen, probably not. But just like to point out, remember where your camera is so that you're t hopefully talking to your audience. Sometimes your kids might also be doing a hangout from a tablet device and oftentimes when they're holding the tablet, they're holding it sideways like this. And many times the tablet's microphone is right there or right here, as is the camera. So in essence, I always say to my kids, you're talking about this and nobody can hear you. So right. they're like, what did you say? And I'm like, exactly. So make sure that if you are doing a hangout on a tablet device, that the, both the camera and the microphone are not covered by your children's hands. Good tip. Very good tip. Um, I think those are all the tips we had. Any yeah, other um, you had, Jenny? I actually have one other, uh, it's, I don't know if it's a tip or it's a resource. This is a website by a fellow Google certified teacher named Brent Catlett, who's just amazing. And it's called eduhangout.org. And basically what it does is it connects folks from different classrooms and different, not even just classrooms, different educators from all over the world uh, to connect them for uh, Google Plus Hangouts. And it could be also an expert or an author or just to share things. Um, and on this you can sign up and try and get connected, sort of like a match.com for different educators or uh, content experts. And then he helps match you so that you can uh, get, get going with Google Hangouts. So if you're like, this is a great idea, but I have no one to do a Hangout with, visit eduhangout.org, uh, eduhangout.org, and it's a great way to get started. And there's also a whole page on here for tips and tricks. Uh, there's a funny video on what not to do with a Google Hangout and some text right here about what to do. But um, really, uh, really helpful resource, and um, shout out to Brett Catlett. Great tip there. So we will wrap up here our, uh, our episode on specifically uh, using tips and some pedagogy with using Hangouts in the classroom. So thanks, everybody, for watching. Thank you.